Hello there, welcome to this first edition of Sherry Lee Uncut. Today we're doing cold girl makeup and we're jumping right in, no fancy introductions. I'm gonna add something to my lips, the Too Faced Hangover RX Pillow Balm. This is the watermelon scent. I love this, found this in my collection. In a recent declutter, but my lips are feeling extra dry, so needed to add a little moisture. All right. For my eyelid preparation, I'm using the Koki Double Time Full Cover Concealer. This is the shade Light Tan and, oh, I have a hair there. I found this on Amazon and I'm finding that the shade range is a little limiting, but if you can find it, I have really been enjoying this. And I'm gonna use the Rare Beauty Concealer Brush to blend that in. All right, so what is Cherilee Uncut? It means that I am not going to cut out any of this video and a few reasons for that. I think sometimes it's helpful for you to see the real time application of product and also you can see my real time struggles because I know you all have them as well and it's not always perfect here in Shirley's beauty room. And also the other reason for this is because I'm trying to figure out ways that I can continue to upload maybe even a few more videos, but make less work for myself. So an uncut video means that I don't have to do basically any video editing. And so we'll see how this goes. Hopefully you all stick around for <laughs> these videos and you come back for the next one. So that provided really good coverage on the lid. And if you hear my puppy, I apologize. We have lots of snacks on hand for her to keep her occupied, but we'll see how this goes. All right, let's go to the foundation next and then we'll go back to the eyes. So cold girl makeup, this was a huge trend last winter and believe it or not, I never did this look for my channel. I don't even think I did it on my own. So I thought I would give it a try because this is actually still a trend this year. There are some differences this year, but this is one of the trends that is still going strong and it's a very blushy look. There's no contouring and the eye look is very, very minimal. So the other thing that's good for me personally, who has combination oily skin, is it's not a super dewy skin look. And in fact, it's more of a soft matte look or more full matte because you think about your winter skin gets very chapped and dry looking. So that's the overall thought. I'm using the original Bear Pro liquid foundation. I've combined Sandstone 16 and Golden Nude 13. And why I'm saying the original is because, oh, they've come out with a new formulation. It's the Matte Bear Pro. And according to the Bare Minerals website, they are going to be doing away with this one. So I know many of you, like me, are huge fans. Like this is, for me, my holy grail foundation. So, if you are one of those people, I think we need to start now <laughs> telling Bare Minerals not to do away with this foundation. The reason why I love it is because you can apply it like I am here with giving more medium coverage, like a light to medium coverage. You could go in with a brush, but this dries down and will not budge all day. This is my go-to when I need my makeup to last 12 to 16 hours. It's amazing. All right, I'm gonna work this in and I might have to mix a little more. <laughs> this is gonna be interesting. Now, if you get bored, I'm sure most of you know by now, but you can just tap your screen to the right a couple times and it fast forwards like 10 seconds or something. I probably shouldn't have told you that, but. <laughs> I'm sure most of you know by now how to do that. All right, I'm not gonna take this under my eyes. And yep, I need to mix in a little more. See, this is something you would see me normally cut out, but you know, this is, I think, important to know that we don't always get the exact right amount the first time. 
I find with this application with the sponge, I do use more foundation because the sponge soaks up a bunch of it. So that's the trade-off of using a sponge to apply foundation. All right, so matte skin, and I am going with a little more coverage because the cheeks have that very blushy look. So you want your cheeks to look like you've been out in the cold. And if you have a lot of redness on the rest of your skin like I do, it's just going to look like your whole face is pink. <laughs> we don't want that. So I'm only going to make my skin pink in the areas that I want it to be. So that's why the rest of my face, I'm going very very full coverage. Oh, there's my the hair that has gotten in my makeup. Okay, who else has that happen? Usually it's right when I'm done with my blending of foundation and have to go in and pull that hair out. Okay, all right. Now I'm going to let that sit on the skin and soak in and we're going to go back to the eyes. Now I have found for me personally, because I have super oily eyelids, just putting concealer on is not enough, even if I set it with translucent powder. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the NARS Smudge Proof Eye Base. And you can use, I've used the Milani. I feel like the Milani does maybe smear the, the concealer underneath a little bit more than this one seems to. But if you don't have super oily eyelids, you can skip this step. I am going to also go in with a little bit of setting powder. And the cold girl look is a very simple eye. So I have pulled together, this is gonna be my version because as you pull it up, you will see lots of different. Okay. If, if the dog barks, I'll mute the video so you don't have to listen. Gracie, come here, Gracie. Come here. Come here. Okay, the dog was just bark barking. Um, we're in my beauty room, which is kind of in the corner of the house, and you can hear traffic. You can hear people are walking by. So sometimes she might bark. So I will try to edit out the sound of that. Okay. Let me grab a translucent powder. I forgot to do that in my preparation. I'm just gonna use the Nikia Joy. This is her pressed setting powder. I, For some reason, I just love this, especially for the eyelids. And I'm using a rougher number 33 brush. So before the dog started barking, I was telling you that cold girl makeup really, I mean, there are so many different versions. Even this year, you'll see some that actually it's, they're incorporating the pink even all around, like making the eyes super pink. Then you have others where it's like the eyes are just white and frosty. So I'm gonna kind of do a combination of those things and make it my own. Okay, we are properly set. Now, the eyeshadow for today that I have chosen is from the Too Faced Let's Play palette. I absolutely love this palette. It's one of my absolute top favorites. And this pink right here is almost a dead on match with what I'm gonna use for my blush. And I still have a hair here. All right, we're gonna have to get serious and get the eyebrow spoolie out, see if we can snag it. Okay, the rougher number 15, we're gonna go in with that pink. And you wanna make sure you do set your eyeshadow or your eyeshadow primer with a little translucent powder so that this doesn't go in too strong. And you might even need to clean off your brush like I just did. You can always go back and kind of mute it down with a an ivory eyeshadow or a little bit of your setting powder. But I'm just gonna put this all through the crease very lightly, but kind of using the pink to give definition to the eyes. So the thought is that, you know, your eyes look cold too. <laughs> 
I don't know about you, but my eyelids don't generally get pink when I'm cold outside. Usually it's just kind of more my nose and my cheeks, uh, but we're going to go ahead and follow this, this part of the trend because you know me, I love pink eyeshadow. So I'm just going to build that up a little bit more. Now this is, I'm going to do a no liner look for this. You could add liner. You can really make this your own. Just customize it however you feel like looks best for you. But I think, oh, that's fun. Okay. Again, I never did this last year. I wanted to, but for some reason I just didn't hop on that trend. But when I saw that it was trending again this winter, I thought, all right, let's just do a little fun video with this. Okay, and I'm really not bringing this down to the lash line. I'm just keeping this up. And what we're gonna do eventually is kind of connect it with our blush. The only other thing that I'm gonna do to my eyes is I am going to add a little bit of ethereal sparkle. You could use the Natasha Denona I Need a Nude palette, one of those two topper shades in there, but I love these Moira liquid glitter eyeshadows, especially this one. I think it is Sweetness is my favorite. I did pull out this more silvery one, but I think we're going to get enough silver sparkle. This has multicolored sparkle in it. So I am just going to apply this. This is a kind of like more of a clear base. So my thought with this is it's like the fresh fallen snow. You know how it looks like it sparkles when the sun hits it. Oh, I miss that. Some of you might not know I grew up in Colorado. And so I actually winter is my favorite season, like snowy winter. Some of you think I'm crazy right now. I live in Southern California. <laughs> wrong place if you want snow. I mean, we have places we can go to see snow, but we just have rain for our winters, which is fine. I do love rain too, but I miss that fresh fallen snow look, right? Oh, so fun. Okay. We might go back and add a little bit more on the inner corner after we do concealer, but I'm going to let this dry and I'm going to look down. This is going to be a really fun part of the video for you to watch. <laughs> But this is really what happens. Close my eyes because I don't want that glitter to really chunk into the crease of my eye. And thankfully these dry pretty quickly. But now I'm going to go in with some almond oil and I need my little handy dandy Q-tip over here. So I just transfer, this is now Solutions Almond Oil that I transfer into this super fancy bottle, the Too Faced Plump and Prime serum comes in that and I have a hard time throwing away those beautiful empty bottles. So I find ways to reuse them. All right, I'm going to just clean up. Obviously we don't have eyeshadow fallout, but sometimes when I'm applying my concealer to my eyelids, some of it gets down here, can get chunky. I do have a little bit of some glitter here, the inner corner. So I'm going to go ahead and clean up the other one. And then I am going to go in with that same concealer. But first, as you can see, I do have some pretty dark inner corners there, dark circles. So I personally almost always need a color corrector. And I've been experimenting with a few different color correctors with this concealer. It is a full coverage concealer. Like, no joke. And I find that I do need something that's pretty hydrating underneath. So I've been experimenting with the Catrice Under Eye Brighteners. And they have two shades. I think this one is Warm Nude. And then this is the pink shade. And I like a combination usually of the two. But I'm going to start with the Warm Nude. This is peach, but it has kind of some hints of brown. So it's not completely neutral. So I feel like mixing a little bit of the pink in makes it more of a neutral shade. So I'm just gonna tap that in. I have some veins that are a little more visible here. That's why I tap a little bit there as well. 
And actually, I feel like that color alone has done a pretty good job. So I'm gonna leave it there. I'm not gonna add any of the pink, but here's what the pink looks like. This by itself for me makes just that dark color look gray and ashy. So if you've ever tried a pink brightener and you're like, what's the big fuss about? This really doesn't work. You probably need something more peach toned to cover your dark circles. So just a little tip there. All right, let's go back to our concealer and same one I used on my eyelid. Okay, now this really just needs, you just need the tiniest amount. It is pretty thick. So I'm gonna apply dots and then smear it, smear it. That's the official term. Smudge it out, spread it out, whatever you wanna say. So this, it looks like a lot, but I'm going in with a real light, just kinda feathering it down. You really don't want too much of this. And then I'm, I am gonna put a little bit here, but because we're not contouring, this is just a way that I'm going to kind of contour my nose with a little bit of lightness. And now I'll go in with, where did my concealer brush go? You know, I did such a good job pulling out all the brushes I was gonna use so I wouldn't have to take time to hunt for them. The A506, this one needs to be washed, but. I think it's good for maybe one more application here. All right, now this one, this concealer does set pretty quickly, so you don't want it to sit too long before you spread it out. But I feel like with this one, less is more to begin with. You can always go back and add a little bit more if you need to. But I've been setting this with powder I'm gonna use today, I'll show you, and it has, really last it like the coverage has stayed so well throughout the day so I'll probably be hearing more about this in an upcoming favorites but all right so I feel like that's pretty good but I could stand for maybe just a little extra you know what I might try this trick I'm going to pull in a lighter shade this is light sand this is really light so don't, if you're trying to pick your color, um, sometimes the name of the color, I mean, that doesn't look like sand to me, does it to you? No, I'm gonna just put a little bit here. Ooh, wow, and tap off. See, you're going through the process with me. This is what I do, I'm like, mm, maybe we need a little more brightening there. And this is a trick that kind of makes it look a little bit flatter. It helps disguise bags under the eyes and dark circles. So I'll do it over here again so you can see what I'm doing. So I'm keeping that light color actually from the crevice of the eye towards the nose. So it does this illusion thing. It draws your eye here rather than here. Kind of fun, huh? All these tricks, right? Okay, now I'm gonna go back with my makeup sponge and I need to powder because I'm not using a cream blush today. For the most part, most cream blushes do leave more of a kind of dewy look on the skin. And since we're going for matte, I thought really don't need a cream blush for that, do we? All right, I'm going to powder. I think I'm gonna powder with the Honest Beauty. This is the Invisible Blurring Loose Powder. And I have a fresh, clean, triangular powder puff from Beaky Beauty, which is the same maker of this beauty sponge. They're on Amazon and they just, they're so inexpensive. They come in sets. Um, I think this one it might be a like a 12 piece set. And then the sponges come in like five or six piece set. Very inexpensive, but they hold up well to multiple washings. So I'm pressing this in and oh, I just love this foundation, not only when it's applied, but once it's been powdered, I mean, this does not blush, does not budge. <laughs> I was gonna say your blush stays intact though all day with this foundation. All right, so here we go. Now, once we get this powdered, Man, this is a pretty quick look. I do need to do my brows, of course, which always takes a lot of time, but 
brows and mascara we will take our time with um but oh trying not to move my hair too much you know because i can't go in the other room and fix my hair otherwise i'd have to cut that out and this is uncut right all right we are done we are fully powdered on the face under the eyes i'm going to go in with the dalton pink power brightening powder there's more to come i'll i'll share my story of what's going on with my dalton collaboration um i will share that in an upcoming get ready with me video i don't want to get too thick in the weeds in this one since it's uncut i don't want you all sitting around going come on move it along charlie but this powder is so amazing and so light and brightening lightweight brightening that's what i meant to say so i'm just going to use a fluffy brush i've experimented with using a powder puff and packing this on and then brushing away the excess and that works too but generally i like a little less powder under there and then i'll just kind of work a little bit of this in the center of the face all right let's do the brows and then we'll go with the main star of the show. So today I am trying out, I've been trying this for a few days. This is the new CoverGirl Clean Fresh Brow and it is the Nano Pencil. I honestly don't have anything nearly this tiny. I don't even know, yep, there you go. You can see it is the most microscopic point, but I kind of like it. And this is the shade Blonde. And I really love how precise you can be. When I first swatched this on my hand after I got it, I thought the formula was so hard, I could hardly get any color to transfer. But then when I applied it to my brows, I was shocked. I had no issues getting the color to transfer, but it's not waxy and it doesn't apply too much, but yet, it doesn't take me a long time to work it through my brows. So I've actually become quite a big fan of this. I haven't tested it on a day at the salon with my hairstylist, you know, to see <laughs> if it's going to last through water and all of that. So I don't think it claims to be waterproof, but I just think this is a really, really good brow pencil. And on the other end, it does have a spoolie. I'll show you that. But I think this color, blonde is a tricky color in brow pencils, which is why typically I don't buy the blonde shade because many times it has a green tone. Here's the spoolie. Has more of a greenish or too yellow. But this one has enough coolness and I don't know, I just think it's perfect for my, at least for right now, my super blonde highlighted hair that I have going on here. And I have not dyed my brows in a while, so it looks like I have larger bald spots than I probably do. <laughs> oh goodness, as we age, losing brow hairs, it's just one of the many perks, isn't it? <laughs> That's okay. We have lots of great tools like this to fill them in. All right, let's just add. Now, I feel like with this cold girl makeup, the brows, you don't want your brows to be overdone or too strong. But everybody that I saw who did this, they did at least do something with their brows. So keep it on the lighter side. If you're somebody who tends to like really carve out your brows, or go strong with your brows, you might dial it back for this look. But I'm just gonna kinda do my average fill in. Definitely trying not to go too thick in certain areas. See, this is the part that, as I said, this is a quick makeup look until I get to the brows. So this, this makeup look you probably could do. I saw somebody say you could do it in five minutes. I think depending on how long you take to do brows and mascara, 
Mascara is the other thing that I usually take a little more time for. So you could probably cut out some time. All right, let's just see here. All right. Okay, I think we're almost there. Let's go in with brow gel. And I'm just using the clear Anastasia Beverly Hills brow gel. And then if I need to go back and fill in any spots, this is usually when those spots get revealed. They have any blank, blank spaces there. All right, let's see here. I think the puppy is being entertained. The Kong toys, if you're familiar with those at all, if you're a dog owner, those have really been helpful. Our other dog, Bojo, did not get into the Kong at all. He didn't, he could pay no attention, didn't care for it. And Gracie, on the other hand, loves the Kong. Uh, she'll chew on it even if we haven't stuffed it with something. But they have all kinds of things you can put in it or you can put your own things. I've actually resorted to using it to put her food in with a little bit of like peanut butter paste that they sell by Kong just to kind of get her to eat her food, but also for her to have something to do. <laughs> All right, brows are done. I think we're fine. Let's go to blush. I was so excited. I had just pulled this out of my collection. I purchased this over Christmas, but I believe this is still available. I just saw somebody use this recently. It's the Charlotte Tilbury. This is the Hollywood Blush and Glow Palette. And UPS is here, so there might be some barking. So stay here, Gracie. Stay here. Where's your comb? Stay here. Stay here. Come here. Where's your comb? Get your comb. Get your comb. Good girl. Good girl. Sometimes they don't ring the doorbell, which I'm hoping that they don't. You got your treat in there? Huh? Good girl. The Kong is great until the treat gets stuck and she can't get it out. Oh, there we go. Oh, don't get your ear in my makeup. Okay, there you go. Real and uncut. This is the kind of thing that happens routinely. Okay, I think we're back. I think it's safe <laughs> to unmute. Oh goodness. Okay, as I was saying, the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Blush and Glow Cheek Palette. Look at that pink. Isn't it so pretty? And it's almost a dead on match with the eyeshadow. So I'm using this fancy rougher brush just because it's so beautiful. I know it's not available anymore, but I like the shape of this and it's quite fluffy. So I feel like this is gonna allow me to bring this blush. Okay, now this trend gives me a little more blush in the center of the face, which is not typically something I do because I have fuller cheeks, but we're gonna do it today because we're just, we're embracing this trend full on for today's video. And then what I'm going to do is bring this into the eyeshadow. Now, some of you might be wondering why I'm not just using this blush on my eyes. And blushes that are titled blushes have dyes in them that can be staining to the skin and your delicate eye area, it can be hard and irritating on the eye area. And I've had eyeshadows with those dyes in it. Gracie, no, no barking. I've had eyeshadows before. She's sure that the UPS man is still out there. So I've had eyeshadows before that stained my eyelids and that was not a pleasant experience. So I'm just really careful about what I use on my eyelids and pink blushes typically have stronger dyes in them. But that's why I went in with an actual eyeshadow on my eyes. Whoa. Okay. And then I know this like across the bridge of the nose thing, I'm going to go real light on that. And I'm only gonna just brush a little bit here. I don't want like full on color. I'm just gonna kind of, again, 
I'm personalizing this to how I like it to be. And then I'm gonna go back to my eyeshadow palette and where's my eyeshadow brush? Now I'm going to bring just a little more of that eyeshadow out. Oh, of course, when I need to film and I'm trying not to cut out, Gracie says, I think now is the perfect time to bark. All right, let's bring that out. Only you can see, she's very interested in what's going on. Come on, come on, come on. Key, look, there's nobody out there. There's no one out there. Yeah, there's nobody out there. You're okay. She didn't get a walk today yet because it was really wet out there. We've had rain for the last three days and last night we had a gully washer. So it was really, really wet out there. So. I told her we'll go out this afternoon, but she's just ready to go, ready to get out there. Okay, all right, girl, there's nobody out there. Nope, we gotta finish our makeup, okay? Okay, all right. Yes, I know. All right, let's just connect that. I think that's very fun. All right, let's go back with just a little more blush. I think I can handle it. I like this blush because I can gradually build up and then I am going to go in I'm going to add just a little bit of this highlighter to right here on the tops of my cheeks I'm not going to do the bridge of my nose this is going to kind of bring in another trend for 2024 and if you're interested I am planning to do a 2024 makeup trend video top five makeup trends so be sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. I think it's going to be fun, but highlighters coming back. All right, I'm going to just do a little bit there. Okay, let's use a little bit of that. Let's see. Let's see. Do I want to use that? No, that's going to come off a little bit too pink, I think. Let's add just a little bit from this palette, this guy right here. And I'm just gonna add a little bit of some glow right there. Ooh, I like that. I love this palette, oh my goodness. All right, and then all we have left is mascara and lips. So here we go. Let's curl the lashes using the rougher eyelash curler. Now, a trick for me, I always have such a hard time keeping mascara off this part of my lid. So I'm gonna try my best to go in with a light hand there at the lash line, but I still want good definition. And I might go back in with my detailed lash curler. Actually, let's just go ahead and do that now. Sometimes it's easier to see the placement for this after you have your mascara on but of course it can pull off some of your mascara too so all right now for mascara i think i will go ahead and i'm gonna attempt to do my superhero and the l'oreal voluminous primer on my upper lashes and then i'll use the elf lash extension or tubing mascara on my lower lashes. I was thinking about using that on my upper lashes as well, but I think I want just a little bit of some fluffiness to my lashes on the upper lash line. So that's why I, one of the amazing things about this mascara to me, it creates quick volume and length. But the trick is not getting it on my upper lid. I'm going to look down, tilt my head back, and see how much we can get on those lashes without getting it on the lid. So I would be curious to know if any of you have tried out this makeup trend or if you will try it. I think it's fun. I know some of you on the East Coast, even Midwest, you're having snow days. <laughs> so 
So I think this is a fun makeup look to do when you're stuck at home in the snow. Just kind of do something like this that's not dramatic. It's a very fresh look. That's what I'm noticing. I feel very bright and fresh. I would actually probably do this look in the spring myself. I think it's a really pretty girly look. Okay, this is really my tricky eye. Let's see what we can do here, see if we can keep it off. Oh, I have a little bit there. See, that's just inevitable. And that's why typically I will wear at least a little bit of a darker shadow just to kind of conceal that, but go back and clean it up after we're done. And you can see that I got mascara on my hair right here. Oh, yeah. This is real and personal here. Here we go. All right. I don't want to get too clumpy here, even though I don't mind that look. I just kind of want my lashes. I feel like if the lashes get too thick, and it's also the reason why I'm not doing any eyeliner, I feel like that can cover up the pink and the sparkle, especially because I don't have a lot of lid space with my hooded eyes, partially hooded. So there we go. Okay. I think that eye is pretty good. Add a little more over here. And this is my eye that is more downturned. And so I'm going to try to lift that outer corner a little more on this side, just to kind of even out things. There we go. And then on the lower lash lines, cause I really want to keep it light. This is the e.l.f. Lash Extender Mascara. I'm really enjoying this, by the way. I find that this does not smudge, it doesn't flake, and I believe it's around $7, which if you know e.l.f. makeup or have been around with e.l.f. makeup since the beginning, $7 is actually quite a lot from the dollar makeup that they started off producing. But as far as tubing mascaras go, it's one of the cheapest. I think the Maybelline one might be slightly cheaper, but it's pretty close. And I think it performs well. It is a more of a lengthening type formula, so you're not going to get a lot of volume, but I really like this. And a little tip for you too, if you have hooded eyes and you find that your mascara up here starts to smudge on your lid throughout the day. You can take a tubing mascara and after you've put on your regular mascara, just touch the tips and the back of those lashes that would otherwise be touching and it will keep your mascara smudge free throughout the day. Okay. I know I have, see that little bit of mascara to clean up, but I'm going to let everything dry first and clean off the mascara that's on my hair. Let's go next to lips. My lips feel nice and hydrated after that pillow balm. And there's a lot of different ways you can go with your lip look. A lot of people were getting really into the full on chapped look and they make the lips look chapped. That's not the way I like my lips to look. So I am gonna go around the edge though with a little bit of Max Soft Ochre Paint Pot just so that we can even out the lip line a little bit. And I'm gonna go with more of a kind of shimmery, sparkly lip with a little bit of some pink. So I've seen kind of full on pink lipstick that's coordinated well with the blush. Then I've seen the kind of chapped lip where it's kind of like an ombre, even outside the lip line with the pink. I've seen kind of white frosty. We're just, you know, there's a lot of options out there. I take my powder puff, just beat up the dry time. And actually while I'm waiting for that, I'm gonna pop in my earrings. I typically like to wear gold with off-white or ivory, but you know, I can't not wear my snowflake earrings. After all, this is cold girl makeup. And no, I'm not gonna be putting on earmuffs or uh, 
a stocking cap over my hair. That's what everybody else does in these videos. That's just not me. It's not a good look for me. I don't even own either of those things, so it's all right. All right, for lip liner, I've chosen the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Lip Cheat. And I chose this one rather than the medium because this is a lighter pink shade. And I think it coordinates pretty well with our blush. So this will be a little bit of kind of monochromatic, a little bit, keeping everything in the same tone of pink. All right, let's see here. I like to go around the edge. This is a freshly sharpened pencil. And then I like to just smudge in a little bit, especially if I'm not going to be going in with like a pink lipstick or a darker lipstick. I don't want there to be this pink line. So this is going to give my lips the look, I guess, that they're kind of frosty or not frosty, chapped maybe, a little bit cold, right? We've got that cold girl lip. Oh, I like that. You could definitely leave it as a matte lip, but I'm going to add one of the new Tarte Maracuja Lip Plumps. This is the pearl shade. I have really been loving this mixed with all different kinds of lip liners. And you only want to click it at just a tiny bit because these will get mushy and you'll waste product. So I'm just going to add a little bit of that. I mean, isn't that just so pretty? Coordinates kind of with our glitter on the eyelid, right? And you don't need a lot of these. Hmm. I have a little, I should have exfoliated. Whoa. Okay. I just dropped the lip product. Hold on. Just dropped it on the dog. She's like sleeping finally. She's like, what are you doing, mom? Okay. That was fun. See, aren't you glad you got that on the camera? You can see this is, this is what really happens here in the beauty room sometimes. All right. I've wiped that off. Wipe it off again. I don't want any fuzz, you know. <laughs> Thankfully it didn't land in the carpet. Okay. Let's try again here. Yeah. I probably could have used a little exfoliation of my lips. Mm, I love that. Blend in the lip liner just a little more. Okay. And now the final, final thing. I didn't forget. Let's clean up the mascara. Grab another handy dandy Q-tip. And let's see if we can do this without taking off all that pretty glitter. Yeah. Let's see. All right. We did a pretty good job there. Let's see. Do we have any over here? It's not bad over here. And then usually underneath my eyes, I end up with a little bit of mascara, but it's not bad today. Okay. All right. So here we go. Let's just kind of take a step back and look, fix my sweater here. And let's just see what we think. All right. I think I could probably go with just a little... I saw somebody who said you go over it with a little bit of your setting powder and that makes it look like it's just the color is coming from within and it's not sitting on top of the skin. I can see that. Let's see. Add a little bit here. Kind of a little blush draping. Just subtly. I'm not going to go crazy. Okay. I know some of you are like, okay, put the blush down, right? <laughs> All right, what do we think? Do we need any more glitter? I think we're good. Okay, let me move my mirror out of the way. And now, let me give you the finished look here. So what do you think? I actually really like it. I'll have to study it more in the mirror throughout the day, but I think it looks cold and fresh, and I feel like I look wide awake. And it looks just very girly. 
I think girly and fresh would be how I would term this makeup style. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Check the description box down below. I'm also experimenting a little bit with the YouTube tagging of products and on the screen there will appear, I think it's on this side over here or this, no, it's this side. There will appear a little box that you can click on and you can make purchases right from the video as you're watching it. Let me know if you find that helpful at all. But thank you so much for tuning in for this first ever Shirley Uncut. Hopefully it wasn't too boring for you and I will continue to do these periodically. But thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up button on your way out. That really does help my channel and I'll see you next time. Bye.